Hello, if you have an ideal Vogue boiler and you have a message in your display which says low water pressure, in this video, I'm gonna show you what you need to do to get your boiler back up and running again. Now to get the boiler back up and running again, we need to turn a couple of handles on some valves underneath the boiler. Now these handles aren't always in the same position, so I've filmed this on two separate boilers where the handles are in different positions, so you will know exactly which handles you should be turning. At the end of the video, I'll quickly show you how to bleed your radiators, but more importantly, how often you should be topping up your boiler and the problems caused by topping up your boiler too often. My name is Mark Ballard and I've been a gas registered engineer for over 20 years. The aim of my channel is to help you with your central heating and your plumbing. If you find this video helpful in any way, then please give me some feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and that will also help others to find the video. If you think this video is useful, then click on that subscribe. And if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video, then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos which will hopefully help you. Right, now let's get on with the video. All the links throughout this video can be found in the description below, at the end of the video or in the cards above. So here we go, this is an Ideal Vogue C26. And as we can see on the display, it has stopped working and it says low water pressure, fill system to one bar, bleed radiators, then refill the system again to that one bar. And when I look at the gauge, I can also see that that is reading zero. So we know the boiler has turned itself off to protect itself from running and firing up when it has no water in it. Now to repressurize the system or refill the system or top the system up, we need to go underneath the boiler. Now when we look underneath the boiler, we'll see there are lots of valves and pipes. It looks fairly complicated, but there's only two which we are interested in. And that's this valve here with the blue handle on it and this valve over here with the black handle on it. Now these valves aren't always in the same orientation. You can see this is another one here and you see both the valves are pointing straight downwards. So in my opinion, that's a little bit easier to get to them and see which ones you need to turn. Now, but this is just down to the installer when he installed the valves to which orientation they're in. We don't want to get confused with these two valves at the back here. We are not interested in those. It's just these two on the front here, just behind that silver braided pipe, which is the filling loop. Now what we need to do is to open both these valves. Now it doesn't matter which valve we open first, uh, we just need to open both of them, which would then let some water go into the system. It'll go through the filling loop into the central heating system, where it'll then top the boiler up and get the boiler working again. Now I'm gonna open this valve here first, and you can see I now turned it so it's in line with the valve. Okay, so that's now fully open. Then I'm gonna to go to the other valve, I'm going to turn that and open it. And as I do that, I'll hear some noise as the water goes through the filling loop and starts topping up the boiler. You can see I've now closed the valve again and I'm going to go and check what pressure the boiler is at now. And you can see it hasn't taken very long and the pressure's already risen up. Now, sometimes it'll take a lot longer to fill up, but you've just got to keep an eye on the gauge and make sure that we don't put too much pressure in it. And one way to do it is just to keep your hand on that valve and then slowly open it and then open your door, watch the pressure rising, keeping your hand on the valve so that as the pressure rises, you can shut the valve again. Now you wanna keep on doing this until you get to round about one bar, or I like to fill it up to 1.5. Obviously you saw on the screen, it said one bar, but I always take it up to one and a half bar because that's what other manufacturers recommend and it just gives you that little bit more room before you'll need to refill the boiler again. That's especially so for older people because they don't like to touch the boilers at all and obviously it gives me a little bit more time before I may need to go back again and just top that pressure up for them. Once you've done that, close both the valves again. Make sure that they are definitely both closed because you don't wanna be continuously filling that boiler up and then overpressurize it because that will then give you more problems. So there we go. Now the boiler is back up and running again. We've got a pressure set to 1.5. The screen has just gone back to its normal screen because that's what it would do. Now we can just run the central heating to make sure that's all working okay. So there you can see the radiator symbol is flashing to show our central heating is on. And then we can see a flame in the display there telling us that the boiler is heating up our central heating. 
just to show you that again with the valves in a different orientation. So we just open the one valve up like that. So it's in line with the pipe. And then we open the other valve up. So we just turn that one there. When we do that, we'll hear some noise as the water starts going into the boiler. And then keep an eye on the pressure. Keep checking it. Make sure that we don't put too much water in it. Keep your hand on the valve if necessary whilst you're doing that. And then just keep on opening the valve and then closing the valve again to make sure that we get just the right amount of pressure in it. So we take it up to between 1 and 1 1.5 bar. And then when you finish doing that, make sure that you close both the valves. You can tell that they are closed because the handles go across the valves. When the handles are in line with the valves, it means that they're turned on. So you can see from this picture here that they're across the valves. And if they're aligned with the pipes, it means that they are still open. So make sure that the handles go across the valves. So here's my radiator and I can tell it needs bleeding because it's cold at the top here and it's hot down here. That means there's a little bit of air in the top here which just needs to be bled out. And we do that through this bleed valve here. Now I've got a little bit of tissue here to catch the water when it comes out. And I've also got my bleed key. Now these little white things on the end here, these turn and there's a hole in the end there to let the air out. So just take your bleed key, put it into the bleed valve and turn it and open in your valve. And then you hear some hissing and you get a bit of water dripping out possibly. And just keep waiting for the water to come out and just catch any drips. Now it's a really good idea to put a towel down when you do this because it is easy just to uh, spill water on the floor and you don't want it going on your carpet because it can be very dirty. So make sure you protect your carpet. And there you go, that's it. The water's come out, shut the valve again, dry up any little drips and there you go. So your radiator will be hot to the top now. After you've done that, you just want to go back and check your boiler pressure again and see if it needs topping up anymore. Now, how often should you be topping up your boiler? Now, it's recommended between two and three times a year. Any more than that, and you start adding a lot of oxygen to your system, which is in the water. Now, that fresh oxygen in the water will start rusting away your radiators. That rust then turns into that black sticky sludge called magnetite. That black magnetite then gets washed around your system and ends up in your boiler, where it starts blocking things up and making it very inefficient. If you are topping up your system more than three times a year, then it's most likely you do have a very small leak on your system somewhere. And then you may want to consider causing an engineer to come and take a look at your system. Also regularly adding inhibitor is a really good idea because that inhibitor will help prevent the corrosion which will stop the magnetite from forming. And of course you can watch my videos all about how to add inhibitor into your system and you'll find this in the description below. Right that's about it then so I do hope my video has been helpful to you. If you want to watch my next video then you can click on the link just here and if you found my video helpful in any way then please give me that little bit of feedback by clicking on that thumbs up and like I said that will help others to find your video and if you enjoyed the video then you can click on subscribe and if you want to receive a notification the next time I upload a help video then click on that bell. And of course, share the video with your friends. And if you want to buy me a cup of coffee, I'd like to say a really big thank you to everybody who's left a donation in my toolbox fund. It's really appreciated and it helped me to make more videos, which will hopefully help you. Bye for now, and I'll see you next time.